Nothing like a little construction noise to keep you from sleeping in, I guess. Oversleeping. Actually, uh, probably a couple of miles from here, they're actually rebuilding a bridge. I can hear them working right now. I could hear them working since, I don't know, probably the last hour or so. I tried to stay in a fight, stay in the bed, but uh, they went. I guess I'll get up. So uh, this morning I'm going to make a cold last night, that's for sure. Starting to get a little... Started to get a little chilly at night, you know, drop it down in 40 degrees or so. Uh, which is to be expected up here. I actually like it. I like to sleep cold. I don't like to sleep hot. Uh, you can always put more on if you have it. Uh, but you can only take so much off, it'll still be legal, I think, to be outside. Um, so this morning I want to get some water. Uh, I'll head down to the spring get some water, I'm going to make some, uh, probably some oatmeal for breakfast, and show you how I make my coffee. Uh, so I'm going to head down to the spring, get the fire going, uh, get my water boiling, and uh, my oatmeal cooking. Might even make my bed, I don't know. Then uh, later on today I want to start doing some other things, like I want to get my, uh, my rope made place this twine and we'll see where the day takes us uh, I might not film too much with all that background noise uh, from the construction I may wait till this evening to film more uh, we'll see I'd say this blanket is definitely a lightweight blanket. But I guess, you know, Civil War blankets. Those guys were marching all the time, walking all the time, so didn't want anything too big and crazy. I'd like to have one of them Civil War wall tents they had. Little pup tents, that would be cool. I have to look for one of those and do a series of that. This old spring is about, I don't know, maybe 50 yards, 60 yards from the camp. And that's really handy to have. I haven't obviously had it tested to know if it's safe to drink or not, but I'm reasonably sure that it is. because I've drank out of it. But, as always, if you're not sure about your water source, then you should boil it or disinfect it in some other way. But I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty handy to have this. It almost feels a little bit like cheating. But I'm thankful to have it. Kind of one of those look a gift horse in the mouth kind of thing. Definitely tastes delicious. Ice cold springing from the ground. Hard to beat that. All right.
Look at this angry little dude. I'm not sure what kind that dude is, but he's huge. I'll find out when I edit it, I'll put it in. Red, black, spiny. Really cool caterpillar. Don't mind finding this either. Got a yellow birch right here by the spring, right by the water source. Give me a little tinder. Get my fire started here shortly. You've probably seen in my other videos, this is one of the best tinder sources up here. This yellow birch. So I'm just going to take a handful, and that should be enough to get my fire going. Just going for the stuff that's already given up. That's probably plenty. Not a golf ball size wad. Put that in my pocket. Like a little bit of beaver activity right here. That's hard to believe. Might have been trying to dam this area up at one point. Interesting for trapping season though. This whole creek that runs through the property would probably be good for some mink. We'll find out during trapping season. Wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. Let me get some trail cameras out too. Okay, I'm done. I got enough. We got my yellow birch here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of shredded bark in here just to give it a little more volume, a little more burn time so it's got time to catch the rest of this on. That's probably plenty. Don't need to use it all. Get that birch bark in here. I can light that and tuck it in. I'm using that elevator fire lay. If you've not seen that video, I recommend you check it out. It's my favorite fire lay because you can actually aerate it by lifting the whole pile up. You know, and if a, if a fire lay is correctly constructed, there shouldn't be a lot of huffing and puffing and, and blowing of the houses down. that going, tuck her in there. Get it back in there where I want it. Just gotta lift this stick. Slide her back in. Set her back down, roll everything on top of it. That's my cue to exit. Hey, 
then with correct construction of the fire lay, you know, material going from, from finer to more coarse and gradually larger up towards sustaining fuel, there's not a lot of reason to huff and puff, you know, and blow all over the place. Sometimes it's necessary, you know, if you need to introduce more air, but a lot of times that means uh, that the fire lay wasn't constructed correctly. Um, you should be able to build it, light it, and go, uh, and it should grow on its own. Uh, so this is a good fire going. Uh, I'm going to get some larger size stuff on here uh, and get my water boiling. Um, that's pretty much going. Take my water, put it right in there. I'll put it over here. Let that go for a while. Now while that's going, establishing a bed of coals, heating up my, my water, I'm going to make a quick tripod to cook my oatmeal up over it. Um, and really, you know, if I'm just making a tripod for cooking, it's not going to hold a ton of weight. I can do a simple cordage conservation lash. I take three equal poles, put those together, I've got a fisherman's loop of bank line, which is probably eight inches long, so 16 inches in circumference. Double that over so that it's a double loop. Slide that over the top. Bring it down about four inches. Then all I've got to do is spin that center pole And it essentially wraps it and bind it up on a knot, but that's the way it works. Now I've got a tripod that takes seconds to make. So, there you go. Pretty simple. I can just hang my bush pot right underneath it, set that over the fire. Make me a little toggle to hang down. That could be as simple as any fixed loop. I'll use a bowling. Come up over the top, make a running bowling by putting the end through. And find me a bale toggle big enough to capture the bale. I can just do a simple marlin spike hitch here. And that toggle will capture on the bale. And I can set that right over the fire. I can do some fire maintenance here. all these ones that aren't burning into the mix.
you. Cook that oatmeal up. All right, that water's coming to a boil. I need to get her out of there. There she boils over. Got a simple bottle toggle. Drop her in there. Lift her out. Put her in a spot where it can cool. All right, let me show you how I do my highly technical coffee. I've got one water bottle full. What I want to do is, and it's just steam and it's not boiling anymore. What I want to do is take three precise handfuls, maybe four because those were light. Got to be precise. And then what I'll do is take a stick. I usually prefer a small maple stick. And I'll just stir that in. Set my stick to the side. What I'm looking for is that nice kind of creamy frothy look that you can see happening in here. That's what I want right there. Oh I can smell it. Oh it smells good. So what will happen is is those grounds will saturate and once they saturate they'll sink to the bottom and uh, you know this creamy color here just indicates I've got about the right combination that I want for the perfect cup of coffee. Stir those in, give them time to saturate, settle, and steep, and then I can pour that off. Hardly any grounds in it. So, uh, cowboy coffee. That's how I roll. So that's that's how I make my highly technical cup of coffee. Here, my oatmeal boiling. My little maple stick. Looks pretty good right there. Let's see if I got some raisins. High score. Handful of raisins. Alright. It's like good good breakfast shaping up here. Got my coffee. It's good that the smoke has changed direction into my face. Do a little pour over. Nary a ground to be found. All the grounds are saturated and at the bottom, so you can just pour right over. I haven't seen a single grain. Beautiful color. Perfect every time. Now for the coffee, I actually use chock full of nuts. Uh, it's a pretty cheap coffee, uh, but I find I like it better than than all the fancy other coffees. Uh, I don't drink Folgers at Maxwell House, but I draw the line somewhere. But chock full of nuts, that's the one. Yellow and black can. Uh, yep, that's good. Do a little churching up of the oatmeal. I put the raisins in. Woodsman's pantry saves the day. Got some dark brown sugar. Drop a couple of spoonfuls, we'll call them, in there. Maybe two or three. It's a big pot. There we go. Find my maple stirring stick. Use a lot of precise 
measurements in my campfire cooking, especially the coffee. Oh yeah. There you go. Little bush pot oatmeal. You got my tulip poplar bark spoon. Still going strong. Mm. Man, that's good. Now, I don't know why, but uh, the long red braid, my wife doesn't like hot raisins, but I actually love them, especially in oatmeal. I'm going to turn the camera off so I'm not eating in front of you. Mm. That hits the spot. I'm going to finish my breakfast.